Hey, it's time for Voice Over Body Shop. And, uh, George, we got a great guest tonight. Somebody we both know and have known for a long time. And there he is. And Peter I'll be o familiar to me, actually, I have to say. Yeah, really. Peter O'Connell. There he is right there. Wave hello and say hi. Hello. Hello, America. Hello, world. Okay. We're, we're going to talk about uh, marketing for your voiceover uh, business and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, if you've got questions for Peter or for George and I, throw them in the Facebook chat room. Because Jeff Holman, I see, is in there. There's a big J on the, on the document saying that he's in there. And he'll relay those questions to us. So stay tuned. Got questions? Ask. Listen. We're ready to go here on VoiceOver Body Shop right now. Now, from the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, JMC Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. Well, welcome to another edition of VoiceOver Body Shop. Uh, Peter O'Connell will be joining us in just a minute. But uh, we got to say happy birthday to George, who hit the big 4-7 uh, yesterday. Uh, apparently, I was a day early. For some reason, now he had a big <laughs> beach party down at, down at Santa Monica Beach, and he sends out an email, and it says, on the 18th. And I look at my calendar, and I'm like, oh, that's next Wednesday. I'm like, no, it can't be Wednesday. I look at it again. Somehow, it ended up... The 18th was on Saturday, except the 18th was Sunday. Must have been a different year. Maybe I, I, that's I may have been looking at the wrong calendar. Major Might League rain fart. It was the Russian. It was a, yeah. Or Jewish calendar, actually. Maybe, maybe that's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. 5782 uh, or 5781. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, and but well, our we guest tonight. Hung out. Yes. So I call George. I, I get down to Tower 28 at Santa Monica Beach. And he says, I'll have a canopy about 10 paces to the left of Tower 28, the guard tower there. And there's a canopy there. And I walk over. I'm like, I don't know any of these people. <laughs> and so I call George. And he is talking to our guest, Peter, J. Peter K. O'Connell. There he is. I saw the whole thing unfold, ladies and gentlemen. He's telling the truth. Dan Leonard was lost again in L.A. It was so funny, the timing, the coincidence, the fact that it was you, Peter, in the Zoom room. The whole thing was just oh, remarkable. Right. Yes. Anyway, Mr. O'Connell here is an expert on marketing. I am not. Yes. Well, at least he's got a company that does that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and a voice artist and your free, your friendly neighborhood voiceover guy. Uh, Peter, welcome once again to VoiceOver Body Shop. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming uh, to see me. I, uh, I was thinking that I was, uh, last time I was really remember being on the show was show number three, in your basement back in Amherst, New York. Well, that had to have been almost nine and a half years ago, because <laughs> that's how long we've been doing this show. Oh, I remember, but it was fun. We were down there, and I think it was you, me, at George, and I think Diane Merritt was watching. I think yeah. that was, it was early. Yeah. Ratings were a little lower back then. Yeah. 
Not not anymore. We got lots of viewers out there, and we yeah, appreciate lots of having you. Watching. Yeah. If you've got a question about marketing your voiceover business, Peter's the guy to ask. But I'm going to ask him a bunch of questions. So perhaps some of the questions I ask him will make you think of another question to ask him. And you can throw it in the Facebook chat room. Or if you're on uh, on uh, YouTube, you can throw it in the YouTube chat room as well. Anyway, so welcome once again. How has your life been during all of this craziness? How has it affected uh, your business? Speaking, uh, my life has been fine. And my family's life has been fine. And we have been... Uh, not terribly adversely affected by all this in that uh, everyone's healthy. Uh, we all have jobs. The kids uh, were not in school uh, for the last half of last year from about March through the end of the year. That was a special time. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> homeschooling. And uh, and then this year they're back at school and uh, they're on different schedules, but uh, they're back at school down here in, in Raleigh, North Carolina. All right. Right. So now you and I are from Buffalo, New York. Yes. As a matter of fact, I think you and I held the very first voiceover meetup group ever when you and I had coffee uh, one time yes. in Buffalo. Yes. Yes. The very first one of the very first ones. Um, and then and then we and then Diane Merritt came into town and then and then I did, we decided to formalize the Buffalo meetup group. And I, and I told you, to, I got you on the phone. I said, I don't have time to do this. You have to do this. You're like, what? I'm like, just do this. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and we created yeah. Heard Around Buffalo. Yes. Which and, is, and which is still around today. Maria Pendolino, uh, yeah. our friend Maria uh, still runs that. And uh, they get together and occasionally invite me. Uh, but most oftentimes they say, oh, just leave him off the list. Did you spell Heard correctly? Uh, yes. H-E-A-R-D. <laughs> That's a good, I love, I am a sucker for dumb puns. That one is fantastic. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, you, you, you know we, we both grew up in Buffalo, but like me moving out here to California, you also have transplanted yourself to North Carolina. What was the transition like for you? Oh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, the move uh, was a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, we <laughs> moves are. Yes, well, we were talking about, moving uh for a while came down and picked raleigh but we hadn't quite decided uh that we we're going to do it we we're doing it for my in-laws because my uh, uh father-in-law got older and and had some issues and and needed to move south to for weather etc uh and I, well, we're going to do this we're going to go down move with them we, we decided uh we made the decision on june 7th and by august uh, i think it was the 16th or 15th we were in Raleigh in an apartment, and the kids were starting school in a couple days after that. Yeah, that's wow. how we did that. Boom, 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 boom. It took a little while to sell the house, uh, not too long, but we were in an apartment in Raleigh, and I had a mortgage. That was fun. That's a special time. Uh, and uh, but we've I've loved it down here. We've all loved it down here. They're very nice people. It's a lovely area, and no one else come. You all stay where you are. Um, <laughs> and, um, um, but uh, we, we really like it down here and the voiceover folks have been great. I started a voiceover meetup group down here. Um, uh, the RDU uh, VO group is, uh, has been around for about four years and made a lot of great friends, many of whom we all know, folks like uh, Roll Gorman and Wendy Zier uh, are familiar names to some voiceover folks here. They, are, they live down here and uh, Deb Stamp. Uh, who's a former Buffalo person who is, who's down here as well. She has joined our group and there's some other great talents down here. Um, so it's been, it's been terrific and made friends with a lot of the studios down here. Uh, been able to do some local work. Uh, got my, my biggest project down here is probably for um, NC State University. Uh, so the big, uh, big college basketball powerhouse, uh, I've done some work for them. Uh, not, the, not the basketball program. They don't want a short, fat Irish guy doing any of their voice work, <laughs> but, uh, for the other parts of the school, it's a big school. They got lots of room for voiceover. Absolutely. It's great. Now you, you also have this fascinating business in marketing. Now I remember taking a class in marketing at Buffalo state college. Yes. Uh, that I think I got a D in. Well, and that was before they had electric light. Yes, it was. It was a long time ago. Yeah, we had. You, well, we had to cr crank the lights to get them on. Okay, but, all right, fair enough. Uh, so I imagine marketing has probably changed. I I remember bits and pieces, but then again, remember I was a, a senior in college at the time. Uh, 
with one step out the door, one foot out the door. Yeah, and and my brain somewhere else. But explain to us, you know, what exactly is marketing? I mean, people hear this phrase all the time, and they're like, "How do I market my business?" Yeah, what, what does that mean? Well, I, th- I to come up with a definition is 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 difficult. Marketing. It's between marketing and branding. Marketing is 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 are the tools that you use to get your yourself out there, and branding is how the customer perceives uh, who you are in the marketplace. Uh, is is basically that marketing, advertising. It's I look at it all as kind of the same. Basically, I look at it as 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 the tools uh, and the plan that you put together. Uh, for your business, whether you be a voiceover person or a uh, an architect, or you be a an accountant, you know every business has to get out there and, and try and drum up new business. Um, you know, marketing's efforts include things like advertising, uh, but marketing is sort of the overarching umbrella, if you will, uh, that that you use a variety of different tools that people are familiar with. Um, things like uh, direct mail, uh, networking. Uh, the internet, websites, and social media all break down into channels of marketing. Um, that's a kind of a brief, just general overview that I think most people understand. The part that I think confuses them, there's a couple parts that confuse them. One is um, they're not sure what to do and then how to do it. Um, and for a lot of years, I was trying to help voiceover people actually uh, write plans for their voiceover business, for their marketing. Uh, to, and show them simple ways to do that. Um, it turns out voiceover people are just too darn lazy to do that. Um, and <laughs> too busy so, doing voiceover, you know. <laughs> well, you know what? No, they're not. They seem to be spending time on Facebook and Twitter. And I go in the you know lunchtime and like they've posted all these things in the middle of the day, having nothing to do with their business. Um, so I don't, I, you know, some of them are making money and good for them. I think that's great. But I, th- you know, I think the general rule of thumb with people is. Um, if you're doing a little bit of, of marketing efforts every day, you'll be better off than most people in your industry uh, for voiceover uh, or for any business. Yeah, I think people forget that the, the voiceover is not show business. It's an entrepreneurial business that you really are responsible for getting your own work. Everybody's like, oh, I'm going to get an agent and then suddenly I'm going to be Mr. Successful. And it's not like that at all, is it? No, uh, <laughs> no, but it ha- but it hasn't been. I, I, I think I think that probably was on the down downturn when I started, and I started in '82. Uh, I think it was still a positive. You know, La Fontaine was still in the in the limousine at that time, going to different studios and going back and forth for his promo work, and then. You know, probably after maybe 10 years after that, I think, he, George, you may know better than I did, around 92, 95. Did he have a studio by then? I think so. I, I didn't know him until 10 years after that. But okay. I do believe, based on the vintage of the equipment that was in the studio when I went in there, yeah. like a Dolby Fax was in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, re- interesting old gear, you know. So, yeah, he, he was in there at the very early stages of that stuff. So, I mean, you know, the the sort of my agent will get me all the work i think that'll still be true in los angeles i think that'd still be true in new york i think the agents and even in chicago to 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 some extent but i think for the you know there's a lot of other states in there there's 47 other states and and the agents are are a channel of your marketing basically auditions are a part of what you get and they're important agents are a great part of your business and they're you want them, you know, if you if you get the good agents, you, you want to have them as part of your as part of your uh, sort of your quiver of arrows. But boy, you better be able to get out there and get your own business and drum up your own clients, and um, you know, and and stop. To me, this is my opinion, but don't be so lazy as to think just putting stuff on social media is going to do it because. <laughs> Yeah. The, the, the the people who are on social media, by and large, aren't the people that are hiring you. Those people are working. You need to find other ways to get their attention. You need to find other ways to relate to them. You need to find other ways uh, to say, hey, you know, let's let's start working uh, together. And generally speaking, uh, that has less to do with, hi, it's me. I'm great. Let me tell you what I am and who I am and rather you know, let's work together. How can we help build our businesses? How can we 
you know, how can we develop a relationship um, that we that allows us to work together? And the, you know, you can go to all the marketing schools in the world you want and spend all the money in college, but the bottom line of all of that is that given the choice, people prefer to do business with people they like or their friends. Now you can't be friends with everybody, right? That's not gonna be practical, but you've gotta do something that allows, you, you've got to craft some sort of brand or presence in the minds of those people who you want to hire you uh, that makes them want to do work with you. Um, and, there, and, and I think we can all name fairly quickly two or three voiceover talents um, that we see online whose branding we've seen over and over. We're excellent at that. Um, just from a, um, from a communication standpoint with videos and all the rest of it, just not just on social media, but I mean, in the other things that they do, I know, I know there's a bunch of them, uh, that I've, I've learned from, uh, you know, and I'm, you know, I, I do it okay, but, uh, you know, you can always learn and these folks are great at it. And I think that is probably, if you're going to take one thing away from this discussion, find out how you can be more authentic how you can develop more of a relationship with the people that you're that you're going after. Um, you know, I've told people for years and years, all of this starts in a database. You know, and I don't care if your database is a thousand people or ten people. Just make them, you know, make them the right thousand or make them the right ten people, and you will have a better chance of creating, you know, creating those relationships that you need. And yes, it takes time, and yes, it's painstaking which is why you always have to do it. Yeah. So now I remember from the answer. I'm sorry if that was long winded. No, that was the, actually the answer I was looking for. So uh, yeah, I used to be in the life insurance business, which is the same thing. You know, we had to, uh, you know, it was like you create these circles of influence and stuff like that. And you had to communicate with everybody to try and say, can I have an appointment with you uh, yeah. and try and sell yourself. But Voiceover is a little different because you're, you're selling an, an interesting commodity, which is your voice. When when you're trying to market your voice, you know, like I say, you know, every voice is different, every room is different, so everybody's home studio has to be, you know, custom built. I would imagine that would probably be the same for someone's marketing plan as well. Well, I think I, I think there's overlapping similarities of the channels that you probably are going to use, but what you do in those channels, what you do in a direct mail letter, how you present yourself, the words start to become important. Um, but also uh, important in that is 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 the you know again I start with the database that and, and database is nothing more than a fancy you know two thousand dollar word for name, address, phone number, email address, etc. Information of the people that you that you have, and then. In addition to that, uh, beyond just beyond just the contact information, is is how you're setting up that relationship with that person, um, and how many times you you're able to touch them uh, through your marketing tools without being obnoxious, of course, um, but you know to make that make yourself stand out in front of them. Uh, you know, for just a, a quick example, um, say you sent out a uh, just an email uh, message to somebody to say. Hi, uh, George. How are you? I happened to check out your website, and I and I really like what you did uh, with with your widget company, and I think that would be terrific. Um, t tell me more about how you guys uh, created that new widget I saw on the screen. You know, so, I don't know, just to develop a relationship, and see if you get a response back, then you send out a handwritten note, and then you send up a follow up an email, or so, you know, you've hit them a couple times, and I'm giving you bad examples here, but but the point is, however, whatever your message is. You're hitting them eh, two, three, or four times to get their attention. So at some point, they're kind of remembering you. Now, that may take place over a six to nine month to 12 month period. Okay. Like I said, it's not going to be fast. That's why the database is important because you need to have a variety of these names to be able to go out to these folks and do the same process. So, and, and you're, if you're staggering them, you're doing that over different times. Then you've got to you get you, you sort of building a base of people you're you're marketing to, and and when you've hit one, oh, you don't want to touch them for another three months. Oh, but the one I called three months ago, time to contact them again, and that's sort of a uh, what I what I mean by staggering the uh, staggering the database and reaching out to these people and keeping those uh, those leads going. 
Yeah. How do you decide who to, to contact? I mean, I, I think that's probably the hardest part about, you know, running the sifter here and seeing what comes out the other end. What's a good way to find people to contact? Darts. Yes. Okay. Just, just throw them. No. Um, it's, um, I, I think it, it, it's based on a couple things. Uh, you, you, can, you can decide it any way you want. And the internet, the good and the bad and the ugly of the internet means the, the internet, LinkedIn, everybody ter- talks to LinkedIn, turns to LinkedIn. Um, when you're on LinkedIn, it's like, oh, I can contact anybody. You know, suddenly you realize how big the world is. It's like, okay, maybe I need to, you know, what I recommend is bites, not gulps. Okay. So start, start small, start in your city, start in your county, start in your state and, and talk to those people that you want to reach out to. Well, this goes into the target marketing aspect of things. Say you are a, uh, a game voice. You're an animation voice. You are, you know, you want to be in games. You, you know, you're not necessarily a commercial person. You're going to go after a different lead prospect, game developers, game producers, uh, freelance graphic designers who design games, variety of different job categories that you can find um, either in online directories or in LinkedIn or in a variety of different places. You know, sometimes even uh, game conventions, you meet people at game conventions. That's just one example. Uh, say, then you're going to go after those folks within a geographic target, because again, you're not going to be able to take on the world. So pick the target that you're comfortable with. Also, you know, beyond getting off to, you know, the, the large number of people, figure out you as a person and as a temperament, as a business owner, what's a reasonable amount of people for you to reach out to at a time. Yeah. Now, if you're doing relationship marketing, email blasts, or, you know, maybe, okay, fine, but you're not, you're not developing a, a relationship on email blasts. You may be able to develop a relationship with an email, you know, a customized email that you've written to somebody specifically talking about what they, what they do and, and who they are. And you want to just tell, you know, see if you can st- start a relationship that way, if they're open to that, but an email blast, which is just going to say, Hey, I'm here. That doesn't work. So, but if you're looking at yourself as a business person, Can you contact three people a day or is that a lot? Or can you contact 10 people a day? And and set for yourself, in my opinion, a a goal for the day. I'm fine if every every voiceover talent on this program, watching this program live or uh, delayed uh, on tape, is saying, you know what? I'm going to get one new lead a day. That's fine. That's great. You'd be doing better than most people on this call. You know, George, are you looking for one new lead a day? Maybe not. Dan, are you doing that? Um, maybe, maybe not. But just one. Maybe. One new lead a day. And, and I'm telling you, the world is your oyster. To, for somebody's, I don't have, if somebody says to me, I don't have time to get one new lead a day. You're in the wrong business. Game over. You, yeah. you're, you're, you shouldn't be in business. You should be working for someone and let them do that. That's right. Again, much better time spent than pursuing countless and countless auditions on some of those pay to plays. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, I, I get why people think that's that can be valuable for them because some people really do well on pay to plays, or some people really do well on, you know, answering cattle call auditions from some agents. I, I, I'm, I'm not making fun of that. Is again, it's a marketing channel, but I'm talking about going after business that you're going to dr- be directly responsible for. The pay-to-plays don't care if you work. Your agents care if you work more, but still will never care as much about you working as you are going to care about you working. Yeah. You are responsible for yourself. George is responsible for, for his business. Dan is in mine, me and mine. We're all responsible for that. And, and you know what the nice thing about the business is that when we get it, we get 100% of the commission. Absolutely. If you're just joining us, our guest is Peter K. O'Connell, voice actor, marketing expert, and consultant. And if you've got a question for him, throw it in our Facebook chat room or in the YouTube chat room, depending on where you happen to be watching. And uh, Jeff Holman will re- relay that question to us, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, how has this pandemic 
changed things. Now, obviously, I asked you, how has it changed things for you? Yeah. But how has it changed the marketplace in, in, in your perception? Well, I think a lot of things have changed the marketplace. I really do. And I don't know if you guys have, have, have covered this. I think the pandemic has changed it. I think uh, the discussions about race and racism have changed the marketplace. Um, and I think in a lot of ways for the better. But I think a lot the marketplace has changed um, because advertisers for a while shut down. And then advertisers came back. And then we, ha you know, we had important discussions about race in this country. And some people were listening. And suddenly you started hearing different voices than you were ever hearing before on ads and commercials and narrations, et cetera. And that changed the marketplace. Um, and, you know, in, in, a, in a good way, um, but also it, it changes it if it, if it, it was, if there were voice talents before who were not getting work, who are now getting work, that means that other voice talents who were getting work may not be getting as much work. So that's, there's been a lot of shifts, I think. And, and, and Dan, I got to think you've, you've noticed that as well. And it's okay. I mean, that's just, it's, we live in a cyclical market. We live in a cyclical world, which is, you know, for guys like me, I, I offer a lot of versatility with, with the things that I do. Some people offer one or two things, you know, I've got a, I've got a vocal range that's all over the place. Um, you, you know, go, go low, go high, you know, characters and all the rest of it. So I have the ability to sort of be chameleon like and i'm not saying that egotistically i'm just saying for the in response to your question how does it impact me i just you know if i was doing one kind of work before i do another kind of work now um and i've seen commercial work go down but narration work go up um i've seen a lot more message on hold um i have seen uh, a little less character work i don't know what that means um but that's just what I, and I, and I've seen that both in my work and I've also seen that in auditions. I haven't seen as much character work in auditions. Now, maybe I'm not getting those auditions and maybe they're all on pay to plays and I don't do pay to plays. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's the sort of change that I've seen in the marketplace. What about you? What have you seen? Well, I mean, George and I will attest to this, that, uh, we've seen a tremendous increase in people needing help with home studios. Because, I was thinking more about voiceover. Though. And in, you know, well, yeah. And in voiceover, yeah, I've seen a, a number of changes. Uh, you know, clearly there is a, a push for diversity, which we're seeing a lot of in, in specs. You know, it'll say, you know, diversity. And it's like, oh, OK, we know what that yep. what that means. And that's OK, because, you know, we, we want people to be equally represented. Um, but it, it seems to be a lot of, like you're saying, narration work. There's There's a fair amount of. A lot of business to business marketing from what I've seen has really gone up. Yeah. And, uh, we, you know, you, you see a lot of auditions to that for that. Uh, Europe seemed to be quiet for a while and then that came back and there's a lot of stuff coming from there. Um, but, you know, I, again, neither, I'm not on the pay to play. To see, either. I'm going to be fascinated to see what happens in the fourth quarter. Now, as we get into Christmas, as we get into the high buying season for a number of reasons, and it's going to impact voiceover. Um, we've seen the number of retailers going out of business or declaring chapter 11, not out of business, not chapter seven is, you know, gonzo, you're done, but a lot of chapter 11, and how are they, you know, how are they going to deal with that? And, you know, my kids and I were just driving the other day and we saw what used to be a pier one, which is just an empty shell of a building. And that, and that, that's just one example of a retail chain that's gone. Um, and not that they were doing a, a boatload of, um, you know, of, of radio or television spots, but they were doing some. And I think that's, I, I think that has impacted, you know, the commercial marketplace a lot. And I think that's going to impact the voiceover. It's got to impact the advertising agencies, which impacts the video production companies, which impacts the recording studios, which goes on that. On the other hand, I think um, because a lot of people are home, I think the gaming business, you know, like this, up we go, because there's a lot of developers are just trying to, push out new games and new, you know, and parents want those games to keep their kids quiet. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. And we've seen a lot of that out here in California is that nobody's yeah. going to movies. Yeah. yeah. That's Nobody's true. Nobody's going to movie. Oh my gosh. And, and how about, how about the news that came across for the, for the, our, our theater actor brethren in, in New York and et cetera, they're not opening up till summer of 2021 at the earliest Broadway is shut down. Yeah. So just think what that does to, to New York. And I mean, I know people are saying New York City is in a bad way. Boy, oh boy. No you know, theater? Even worse. Your, 
when so much of your city's income is tied into tourism, I, there's not going to be who's going to put who's going to be there to put up the you know the Rockefeller Christmas tree. I don't know. You know, are they, they going to be able to do a show with the, the Rockettes in masks? Who wants to see the Rockettes in masks? You know, I, I we're don't. usually not staring at their faces though. So, well, okay, <laughs> um, but. But, you know, all that stuff is going to is going to be different. And I don't know how it's going to play out. Yeah. Um, you know, we're all having to adjust uh, how we are communicating in our businesses, how we are marketing our businesses. I guess the important thing is, and, and I think there's some people who just are so scared to get involved in any sort of marketing or any sort of communic- outbound, outbound communication. Let's call it that. Outbound communication. Let's not call it marketing. Marketing is a scary term. That's a $10,000 word. Let's call it outbound communication. They've got to be doing that now. They've got to be doing it now because it takes at least um, two months for it to really start to make something happen. Occasionally, occasionally something can happen like that. But by and large, and you guys have owned your own businesses for a long time. Tell me if I'm wrong. It takes time for the marketing to kick in. Am I right or am I wrong? Six months. In the life insurance business, it was always six months from the initiation of business to actual fruition of business. And I saw that at the six-month turnover of the pandemic, the business had a significant uptick personally from the stuff yep. that I, 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 I did then. George, what about you? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I my my mark. I don't have any solid marketing traditionally because I just spend, I just put all my time into the social media because I'm in so many of these conversations. Yeah, and that's where. So I don't. I haven't done traditional marketing in some time. That's like I guess maybe I'm lucky. I haven't maybe needed to or whatever it is, but that's where I've invested my time because because but I don't think because you've got what I investment. But I I, I, I yeah. think that is. I think video is a great tool, and we haven't talked about it because we talk about direct mail all the but video is a great tool, uh, and it can be a good tool for voiceover as well. Uh, it has its upside and its downside, and and I don't know if you guys are going here, and you can stop me if you, if you want to go on another well, question. But yeah, I mean, what, let's talk about that in the next segment because that is okay, something I, I wanted to cover, and we've got a lot of questions from our vast worldwide audience. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Peter K. O'Connell talking about marketing, or perhaps we'll call it professional outreach. How does that sound? There you go. All right. We'll be right back on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. Hello. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. It's a place where you can get your body shopped with voices. Come on. Look at Dan's head. So shiny. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, Okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the VoiceOver Body Shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Getting into VO is quite an accomplishment. And accomplishing anything in the world of performance can be really tough. Getting great information is tough. Getting the right advice and mentoring is tough. Simply getting ahead is tough, and the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Let's make it simple. To get started in voiceover, the best way is with VO Hero's free online course, Getting Started in VoiceOver. You'll learn everything you need to know to create a successful, satisfying, and profitable voiceover career. The link is really simple. Here it is, voheroes.com forward slash Start. Again, that's voheroes.com forward slash start. Get ahead in voiceover simply by getting started. Go to voheroes.com forward slash start. You know, I used to live in Buffalo, New York. 
But now, I'm in sunny Southern California. But no matter where you are, when you need equipment strictly for voiceover, there's only one place to go. And that's voiceoveressentials.com. And right now is the time to get with Harlan Hogan's Signature Series V01A voiceover microphone. They also have the fabulous Centrance MicPort Pro 2 with limiter in stock. In fact, it's the only version they sell. Now, a limiter is a must-have, especially when recording oneself with no engineer to ride gain for you. By the way, it's the most amazing limiter they've encountered. It's impossible to detect, and it's incredibly quiet. And they've upgraded the Portabooth Pro Quick Script LED light. Now it has two goosenecks, all the better to read your script. Go on over to VoiceOver Essentials right now to get these great VoiceOver Essential products. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. What? Oh, we're we're right back you. <laughs> with Peter Peter O'Connell talking about marketing and apparently my mustache and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, Just teasing. Yeah, we've got a bunch of great questions uh, from our vast worldwide audience, and we're glad that you guys we're are glad to there. make up some answers for them. Okay, good. Uh, hey, that's my dad's line. Stop it. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> my dad's my dad is a docent in a, in a museum. And that's one of his favorite lines. Oh, good. Well, your father and I would probably get along <laughs> swimmingly. For sure. Yeah. Um, all righty. Um, let's start off with a couple of audience questions. George? The first that came in right at the beginning was, he actually emailed as well, so he really wants this answered. Uh, <laughs> this is from Jim, McNich uh, Jim McNicholas. And uh, he says, um, I've got a question for Peter, your guest, when prospecting, where do you find new clients when trying to market your voice? Okay. So when you're prospecting, where do you start? Well, again, we, we brief, briefly touched on this earlier. It depends on the genre that you're yeah. going into. So let's just assume uh, that, that you're going to be like most voiceover talents and want to work in commercial. And so you're going to want to focus on those folks who do, uh, who do the commercial production. Uh, by and large, uh, those are freelance audio producers, they are advertising agencies, and they are uh, recording studios, depending, you know, and that's, the, the, some recording studios do, some recording studios don't, some advertising agencies do, some advertising agencies don't, and um, there's some, there's video production companies, of course, who also uh, do need voiceovers for all these things, and you want to probably get involved in their roster. Um, so I would start out again, uh, Jim, looking at, at where you, where you're targeting, I'd probably start out, uh, in a regional way. You know, I'd look, you know, from a couple counties over, I don't know, you know, if you're in the middle of podunk nowhere, um, you know, and, and you know, you don't have a neighbor for 200 miles, you're going to have to go a ways. Um, but you're going to want to, uh, do your research. Uh, again, LinkedIn is a tool, uh, uh you know, the, all the hubs out there, production hub, et cetera. There's a variety of, uh, of different resources that will list those types of folks like recording studios, et cetera, uh, video production studios that, ha that are out there that you can probably contact. But before you contact them, don't just go for a phone number. Uh, no matter where you're going for prospects, I would recommend uh, that you go after uh, a person and really target the person. Sometimes it's not the CEO of the advertising agency. In most cases, unless it's a pretty small advertising agency where he's the CEO and the janitor, uh, you're probably going to look for either the creative director or, uh, or media producer uh, as a job title uh, as far as the, the, the person that you would like to try and reach out to and get as much information as possible. Um, if you want, you know, if you can't find the actual person online, don't be afraid to, to call up the agency and say, uh, if you don't know the name of the person, couldn't find the name of the person, you can call them up and ask them just very simply, hi, my name is Jim McNichols, and I uh, would like to talk to the person who is in charge of audio production for your client's projects or video production for your client's projects. Who would that be? And then just listen, uh, because at that point, the person on the phone, if they haven't hung up on you already, good sign if they haven't, um, will probably put you, oh, I can, I can direct you to, to a person now. 
well, if, if they say that, you got to be ready for this. Okay, this is the little jig. This is the little dance you have to be ready to do. You say, oh, before you connect me, can you give me the name of that person just so I have it down here? Because sometimes they just click, press a button, and you get transferred over, and you're like, hi, this is Jim, and I just asked to be transferred to the person who might hire voiceovers or do audio video production. Who am I speaking with? Which is awkward. But if you get a name and it's like, oh, Nancy Jones. Hi, Nancy. This is Jim. I own a voiceover production company. I understand you're in charge of usually casting voiceover talents or, in fact, keeping a roster at the agency of voiceover talents. Do I have that right? Oh, yes, you do, Jim. And uh, I'd love to put you on the roster and this will be great. La, da, 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 da. Mm. Um, so there, there's the answer to your prospecting question, I hope. All right. A very good Complete one. A very thorough one. Because I aim to please. And that's why you're here. Uh, Sarah Mitchell says, hey, Peter, do you use a spreadsheet or CRM? Yes. Next question. Next question. Oh, you want me to elaborate on that? Oh, I'm <laughs> just, just a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes, I do. Uh, and I'm very I, I'm very big on CRMs. And I know I'm not going to recommend a CRM, um, but Excel spreadsheets are a CRM. So are our three by five index cards. I don't care where you keep the names and how you keep them because much like marketing programs, uh, CRMs are as individual as the, uh, as, as the user. So you have to find the system, uh, whether it be Act Contact Software or our Microsoft Outlook or one of the more social media platform like Nimble, something like that. I myself uh, use Google Contacts. Um, and I, I send out all my stuff, uh, with, whether via mail or whatever, uh, in Google contacts, I keep, uh, I keep a uh, track of when I've talked to somebody, um, and when I have emailed somebody or when I have communicated with them and when I talk to them, I put it in the, in the note box in there and that's, that CRM is free. That works for me. And I tag them. I have them tagged, so all the rosters that I'm on, they get a certain tag on, on them. And if they're in the state of Colorado, I have a tag for them. If they're video production, I have a tag for them. So it depends on on who they are and how they relate to me and, and how I might use them. But that's how my brain works. You don't have to do it the way I do it. You have to do it the way it works best for Sarah. But I highly recommend uh, some sort of organizational tool that will allow you to keep track of not only the names and information about the people, but how and when and why you contacted them or why they contacted you. Because Sarah, you sound like an intelligent young person. At some point, you're going to be old and feeble like Dan. And when you are, you're going to go to the birthday parties on the wrong day. And then you're going to forget also <laughs> Uh, why, in fact, why, in fact, that you, this person from three years ago contacted you, and so you're going to want to have that written down. And and Dan, that's just going to be a theme for the rest of the show. I have Sorry. a feeling, yeah. It's, well, yeah. listen, it's been a theme for my life for the past few months, anyway. Buddy, it's okay. It's, like I said, like I said before, we've all been there. Yeah, yeah. You see, it was George's birthday, and then I realized I'm 16 years older than him. So it's like. Yeah, I'm yeah. You're, so you're 47. Yep, pretty much. What a baby! Yeah. Nine years younger than me. Wow, we. And we've all been there. And just in Dan's case, it was a day early. Um, <laughs> Randy Thomas says. <laughs> Randy says, uh, LinkedIn is a treasure trove. Um, and then she says, Do you ever reach out beyond the marketing or programming people, and go up the chain to like the CEOs? Uh, I would do that in certain situations, but by and large, my, my experience, your mileage may vary, Randy, uh, is uh, that sometimes the people who are making the decisions are the people that I'm contacting. And when I go too far up the ladder, they go, why are you contacting my boss? You stay <laughs> oh, away from yeah. my boss. They don't, they don't like that. That's how, that's how some women talk. <clears throat> um, kidding. It's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. Um, so, I don't like to do that. Now, if I am at a networking event, uh, say for an ad club, and I'm with a creative director, uh, but I happen to meet the president of the agency, um, you know, networking, I, no one remembers networking uh, since March, but we all used to get together, shake hands, talk to people, have drinks. It was a lot of fun back in the old days. Um, 
in, in olden days. But, but then I have no problem reaching out to those folks. But you really can, uh, in all seriousness, um, you know, burn a little bit of a bridge if, if the person who, who you're, you should be contacting and who's been a good partner in all this um, finds out that you contacted their boss uh, without their knowledge or, you know, because there's politics involved in every business. And boy, is there politics in places like advertising agencies and video production studios. And ah, so careful, da- tread carefully. Yeah. Uh, L- Linda Joyce Miner says, how many media sites, which ones should I spend time using? I don't th- really? I think... Really? <laughs> I didn't ask okay. the question. Okay. I mean, come on. How many media sites? Which media sites? Okay. Um, a few. I, it's, <laughs> let's, uh, George, while you're there, would you just go on Google and just go media sites and give me the number <laughs> that comes up in the search? It's got to be something like, I don't know, 2 million. So I'm, I'm teasing, uh, uh, Linda, and I'm, and I'm, I'm making fun, but I, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by media sites. Um, if you mean social media sites or if you mean um, uh, production media sites, I think you have to go where the fishing is best. And like a good fisherman, uh, a fisherman, of, a, a fisher of prospects rather than a fisher of men, uh, you have to spend some time in various holes, uh, you know, with, with, your, with your line in the water you know, fishing away, trying to figure out who, you know, where, where the best fish are. So I guess I'd say um, you have to figure that out. I think if you're looking at a local, uh, from a local or regional area, uh, for example, um, I would start with something as simple as ad clubs, advertising clubs, uh, the marketing association, the American marketing association has, has, um, has clubs all over the country. Uh, and uh, some of those folks are straight marketing and strategic and analytical marketing. They have nothing to do with uh, more consumer or business to business marketing as far as the creative side of things. Those are the, the creative people are the ones you're going to want to talk to. Um, so you've got to be careful who you're talking to again in a particular um, agency, but ad clubs and uh, advertising federation clubs, AAF, uh, are good for that. Um, and then, uh, the, uh, you know, the marketing, uh, the marketing clubs are, are good for that in yeah. your, in your area or region. That's where I would start. Yeah. Let's cover this one for a second, because you know, we, we, we were talking about talking about this and that is the use of video for marketing yourself. Yeah. You know, now George and I do this show every week, which has been very which, successful. Which is, is great. And that's yeah. why everyone knows you guys as studio masters. That's right, and that's why, and that's why we, it was always about shameless, uh, you know, promotion. No but, promotion. Uh, but which what one about, is Barnum and which one is Bailey? I always get that confused. <laughs> we won't go there. Um, okay. But how can one uh, wisely use video in in their marketing campaign? Um, I think you can use it wisely as long as it fits in with the persona or the brand. Uh, that you're trying to espouse uh, and and has relevance to your audience. Um, you know, I was, I, I do, I've done videos in the past, uh, demo videos, which sort of, you know, basically highlight the audio and have some informational graphics on there. But I was, I was telling George in the break, boy, that sounds like real television. So George and I were talking in the break uh, <laughs> while Doc and the band were playing next door. Um, that, um, that I was at VO North this weekend, the conference, they had the virtual conference, uh, that Tanya Buchanan and, uh, Derv Latrainer put on, uh, up in Toronto for all of Canada and it was virtual, but, uh, a couple of, uh, three of the casting directors were talking about, uh, somebody mentioned video demos and we've all seen these video demos now that have become quite popular where people put together audio, auto demos, car demos. Uh, you know, audio car demos with the actual spots or or stock footage to make it look like a real car commercial. And they put these demos together. And the casting directors are looking at this going, why are they doing that? I don't want to see it. I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to have the image put in my mind. I want to hear it. I got to, I'm, I'm here for the audio. Um, so to your point, Dan, it, it makes a bit of a difference how you know what you're using it for um 
And I and I'll just uh, you know maybe it's I, who you're marketing to as well because if I think the your, your the end user or the client that owns the dealership might be more impressed by that than a casting director might be. Right, right. I think so also. But I, but but again, by and large, when it comes to auto dealers, you know there are some auto dealers and and some dealerships that do have marketing directors that do the hiring for that. But I'm finding more and more there are. Uh, advertising auto marketing groups that work with large regions of the country and national re areas of the country uh, okay. on, on putting together specific campaigns for your local car dealership. So hmm. in many cases, your local car dealership's marketing campaign is being done by a guy in Cincinnati. Gotcha. Even though you're living in LA, that type of thing. So I guess, you know, and, and, but you're right. There could be those people out there. Again, there's so many people making these decisions. You're not going to know how or when or who uh, the right people are to get. So that's part of the confusion. And so there is no perfect formulation for this. There is no algebraic equation that makes it absolutely perfect. Darts again, we're talking darts. Um, so, you know, as, as you use video, use it in a way that you think is true to your brand, that, that speaks well to your targeted audience, and again, figure out who your audience is for your video, for your uh, voiceover demo, for your social media uh, memes or graphics, whatever you're doing, you need to have, begin with the end in mind was a famous uh, marketing, uh, to, uh, I'm gonna forget it, uh, forget the fellow's name and I'm sorry, somebody look it up on the web for me, begin with the end in mind. Um, but so who is your audience? And then back everything else up out of that. That, those are the people I want to reach. I want to reach. Uh, I want to reach video production um, casting directors. Okay, those people like this kind of message. I'm going to create that kind of message, and then I'm going to back up all my my tasks that I have to do to make that message hit at the correct time, at the correct, you know, at, at, with the correct message and the correct graphics from there. So, if video is a part of that, do it um, because I think video can be a very effective tool. But I think the best thing to do is to allow your brand to share your message of who you are because, you know, they're going to listen to your voice. But at the end of the day, how are you going to help them? Yep. What is it that you're going to do as a voiceover talent that's going to make a difference in their lives or make their lives easier? That's what your marketing and ultimately your brand needs to be about, yep. I think. But Stephen yeah. Covey, by the way. Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey. Thank Covey you so yeah. much. I read the book, but it was the eighties. Yeah. See, it's as much as I remember marketing from you know from forty years ago. And I didn't know the answer, by the way. That was well, of course. <laughs> Not of course. trying to show I, off. No, I, I would have given it to you. That's okay. <laughs> uh, you got the question from Richard Bay there, George. Sure thing. Let you ask this one. <laughs> Alrighty. From Richard Bay, this is always, this is a good one. Which page in Google has all the leads for voiceover? Nah, he wants something a little <laughs> yeah. more, a little more uh, nebulous, I think. Esoteric. What is, what is your prediction for the future of voiceover? <laughs> We're all screwed. <laughs> um, I, uh, I don't know. I, you know, if I had that, if, look, Richard, if I had that answer, would I be on this show? Um, no, I would <laughs> to joke. Um, I'm with friends. No, I, I don't know. Uh, I think that it will always be a situation of those who have, who, who, who do the right amount of work to keep their business going and, and focus their branding, marketing, communication efforts, even if it's just phone calls. And, and you never send a letter or never put a, put a graphic or picture on, on an Instagram post, whatever the simple thing that is that works for you, merged with talent and sprinkled with some luck and timing. You know, again, timing is important here. It's, it always is. You know, jo Joe Cipriano tells the famous story in his book On Air of how he was on the air um, as a weekend disc jockey at KISS FM and the fellow who was the voice for Fox was going on vacation for a couple of weeks and they needed somebody. And they heard Joe Cipriano's voice on a weekend air shift on the radio. I like that guy. 
rest is history. So there's a little bit of luck in there. Joe, did, Joe wasn't marketing for that. He, you know, he, he was just trying to pay his bills. He, he was trying to pay his bills. He was trying to, you know, was trying to keep his kids fed on uh, Kiss FM on the weekend, which I'm sure was not necessarily a glamorous, a glamorous spot. But nonetheless, hey, it was, it was still Los Angeles. So, and, and I think it was Kiss AM, if I'm recalling the story correct. It wasn't even, you know, 1027. It was Kiss AM back when I think AM was, had a little bit more impact. But again, luck is involved with it. And um, so I don't know where that's all going to go. Is, you know, artificial intelligence going to take over? And are we just going to have all computerized voices? Um, in my heart of hearts, I don't think so. And, and actually, uh, at VO North, this conversation came up as well. Um, and just it, top of mind because it was just it was we were just in the conference, but the the point of it was, um, and I think it was during uh, Lizzie was doing the um, Liz Dinesh Nero, Dinesh Nero was doing the um, uh, telephony conference and somebody asked her about about that and and her point was well taken uh, regarding people want to hear the human voice and boy I tell you even on a recording people have a sense as of right now when it usually is a recorded voice versus a human voice. Um, and I know that a lot of companies, for example, um, have gone, have gotten away from uh, having a receptionist at the front desk because, you know, there's a salary, there's FICA, there's somebody else you got to invite to the Christmas party, a lot of expenses. We don't like those expenses. And the, you know, and the CFO says, we don't need that. We can just get a system. It's cheaper. It's better. The customers don't care, you know, and they press a button and they get to the person who also has voicemail saying, hi, this is Jerry. And I'm not here. Jerry's never there. Do you ever notice that Jerry never answers the phone? I not once, not once, not well, once. Yeah. But I mean, but people want to deal with, with, with a person and, and someone who at least seems to be human and i know we, we have some technology that's changing it but i think at the end of the day i don't i don't think we're going to want to no matter what generation you're at millennials xers whatever it is you know and i i just think that human element is still going to be very very important yeah but we'll see don't buy stock in that yeah. Well, Peter, thanks so much for, for joining us this week. Hopefully it won't be another 10 years till you join us again. Uh, and uh, if people want to get a hold of you, if they want some help with their marketing, I'm sure you'll, you are professionally trained and ready to help them. How would they get in touch with you? I'm a certified marketing executive, darn it. I have a diploma and everything. I got All right, a cool. diploma from the University of Dayton. Yes, the same University of Dayton that should have won the NCAA men's basketball this year had not that COVID I'm not bitter. Um, uh, PeterKO'Connell.com or AudioConnell.com. If you if you just Google Peter K. O'Connell, you'll find me. And if uh, you want some help and you and you have a little money, uh, then that's great because my stuff ain't free except for these guys. Right. Well, we we gave them a lot of the what, not necessarily a lot of the how. Peter, thanks so much for being with us tonight. It was uh, gentlemen. It was good to see you. And and Dan, thanks for giving me a call. George, always a pleasure. Uh, continued success success with your show. Thank you, and uh, conti Peter. continued success in North Carolina. And we'll hopefully all get together again soon. I hope so. Thank you so much. All righty, Peter K. O'Connell. All right, we'll be right back to wrap things up right after these messages. In a world of voices, one place wasn't VO Buzz Weekly. Voice over body shop, the better one. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do, then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, everybody, it's that time of the show where we get to talk about our fantastic, wonderful, amazing sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. At this point, you have to know what Source Connect is. My gosh, all the agents are nagging you to get it. Um, 
even if you don't have an agent, maybe consider having it ready to go. So when you're asked for it, you can say yes. And what does that mean? You go to source-elements.com, get a 15 day free trial, but you can even wait to activate your trial. You can sign up, get your account going, get your iLock account set up, have all the pieces in place, and then wait to activate your 15 day free trial to make sure that it doesn't expire by the time you need it. But it gets better than that. If you have had your 15 day free trial and you let it expire, don't worry. There's now two day passes. So you can activate your source connect for just that gig and just basically pay for the time you actually need. So you really can't go wrong. There's no major commitments anymore. No subscriptions. If you don't want to go that route, you do have that ability to just activate it and use it for a day or two. So it's a no brainer. Be ready to use Source Connect for that big gig that comes down the line, which is happening more and more these days, thanks to working remotely. And sign up at Source-Elements. And if you have a chance to tell them we sent you, would you do that? That'd be awesome. I'll be right back right after this. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the Voiceover Body Shop. We're back. Heavy wave. And we're back here on Voice Everybody Shop to at least say goodbye for this segment. Uh, our thanks again to Peter K. O'Connell for talking to us about marketing. We haven't really covered that a whole lot lately, have we? No. So, uh, anyway, uh, one of the things we have that keeps this show going is our donors. And who are our donors of the week? We got donors. We've got lots and lots of donors. Name that show. Remember that song? It's, uh, it was about mail, but I can't remember what it was. It was uh it was um Letterman. Oh yeah, oh that was well it was the song came before that, but yeah, he used <laughs> used he used it. Yeah. Anyway, the who are our donors of the week? Okay, sorry. Michael <laughs> Kearns, Graham Spicer, Larry Hudson, Thank Sarah you. Borges, Philip Sapir, Trey Speaks for You, and Antland Productions. All very familiar names, probably because they're subscribers. And we appreciate they clicked it. on the link and they subscribed through PayPal. And, you know, for as little as a buck, we'll read your name on the show. Hey, you know what they say about voiceover marketing? It's top of mind sometimes. Hey, you know, I heard that guy's name recently. You're right. I should give that guy a call. We should cast him. Smart people. Subscribing smart marketing. Is, is donors, smart ad but... buy right there. Yeah. So anyway, you can subscribe or just make a single little donation if you picked up something really valuable during the show. All right. right uh, yes, at TV. Yes. Uh, coming up next week is Tech Talk number 42? Three. 43. Three, two, three, it's 43. Yeah, yeah, we just did 42. So it'll yeah. be Tech Talk 43 coming up next week. Uh, hey, join our mailing list, too. If you go to our website, uh, vobs.tv, there's a little button there that says subscribe. And Things people have been doing that. Yeah, we have. We're like like over well over 700 people on that list. We want to get it up to 1,000. So it's less than 300 to go there. Um, also, we need to thank our amazing sponsors for which we wouldn't be doing any of this. Uh, like, for example, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. Also, our thanks to Jeff Holman for run, doing a great job in the chat room. And our technical director tonight, with a little assistance from Mom, is Hat Merlino. 
did a great job. Take a hat off for a hat. He did a great job. He just tipped his hat. Okay. And Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, we got Tech Talk coming up next and next week. So stay tuned for that. If you got tech questions, throw them in the chat room. In the meantime, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Have a great week, everybody. Good night.